Hello, and welcome to One Night Strahd with you. <clears throat> Tina, you're so lucky. You know you just gave me a heart attack. When I looked up and you weren't there, I just about shit myself. Oh, speaking of, we're uh, br br sponsored and brought to you <laughs> by the Hedra Group, the creators of the One Night Strahd module. We're so excited to be putting on this first of a six-part miniseries for you today. I've assembled some of my favorite role players. Uh, I'm super nervous because this is actually my first time running a pre-written module. It's gonna be great. I've never it's done it be before. Yeah, I've literally never done it before. So I am not well, god of this have, world. Well, not in D D maybe, but you ran a pre written module for me that you improved vastly. No, because I completely changed the story. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> it was it like there was the Call of Cthulhu adventure, and then there's what I ran, which was not that adventure at I all. You improved it, but I didn't know how much. <laughs> Okay. No, it was completely, completely separate from what oh, materials were provided to me. Flex that DM muscle. I can flex all of my muscles for you, BB. Welcome to One Night in Strahd. This is also my first time in Barovia. Hello, welcome. Mm -hmm. Is it your first time in Barovia, Alex Ward? Have you been here before? Uh, I was briefly in Barovia once, but I've been looking forward to coming back. Ah, so you were like, what, maybe passing through? Yeah, just, just briefly. Okay, very interesting. Persephone Valentine, uh, have you fucked Strahd? Yes or no? Yes, That's a yes. I will take I will take your long silence as maybe you're being coy. I'm being coy, very uh, shy about whether I fucked Strahd or not. Fair enough. <laughs> Athena Palmer, mm -hmm. hello, welcome to Barovia. Have you been here before? Is this first time oh. stamping passport? Oh, yeah. I've been to Barovia plenty of times. Oh, how many times have you fenced with Lord Strahd? Uh, <laughs> since, uh, well, maybe 2007. <laughs> I've been messing around with Strahd. Really? Out. So you're Even a long time. Long relationship. Oh, with Strahd. Get off my man. This is, this is, uh, Hands down, this is one of my favorite modules. This is like the oh one god, I do the every pressure. Year. I love it. Oh god, the I love pressure. It. It's my favorite. Oh god, the pressure. I never get to finish. <laughs> oh god, the Damn pressure. <laughs> well, the cool thing with this module is it's meant to be run in an accessible amount of hours, uh, as opposed to traditional Strahd that takes a long time. When a I think, time. yeah, I think the the average lifespan of a D and D group is twenty five hours. So when you have a campaign that takes 50 to beat, uh, it doesn't really work out. But we're going to attempt to beat this module in six episodes. But first of all, Jan Kretschmer, is it your first time in Barovia? Yeah. Second time? Third time? This, I have been in Barovia before. I have also run Barovia. So I'm very excited mm, to, to come back over here and return. Like this. Very, very nice. Yeah, this is going to be a class. OK. All right. So. Uh, I'm so nervous, guys. It's okay. It's gonna be. <laughs> it's chill. We're all chilling. Wait, is that my Discord that just went off? No. Wait, did y'all hear a Discord notification? No. No. Oh, okay. But I closed. I think I closed mine. Though. No, it so. might just be me like stress hallucinating. <laughs> just kidding. I've never been stressed in my Do life. Do we need to have Discord open? I have mine closed right now. Oh, no, 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 you can have it but closed. Do you want us to have um, it open? Alex, I think chat, we need to up our volume. Okay. Um, oh! Sorry. Wait, are two of you quiet? On my end, you're not. Apparently, Apparently. Uh, myself and uh, Persephone are quiet. Yeah. Oh, wait, try now? Testing, testing. Can you hear me? Hello, my name is Persephone mm -hmm. Roth. I'm gonna fuck Strad. <laughs> Nice. Come on, vampire straddle, daddy. Straddle him. I may have had the wrong <laughs> channel muted. That. Oh. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> but it, it's it's okay. Hey, it's better. We can hear. They can hear us. Great. We're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. You can put me on that channel. That way, you can't hear the sounds I make when I fuck Strat. Wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what a wet noise. Hold on. Hold on. Because it gets distracting. For, for 
first and last first and last time being sponsored by Hedger Group. Actually, no. I'm pretty sure when they hired me and asked me to bring my friends, they knew damn well what this was gonna be. It's, they knew this is always gonna be it, you know. But we're gonna tell an amazing struggling, story regardless. Struggling the man. Um, before <laughs> before we begin, um, some light uh, content warnings because I believe in those. Um, we're gonna go by the X card system. If at any point in time uh, something is not cool, you don't like it, you can raise your hand, you can DM me, you can text me, anything you need, we'll put the game to stop, go to a be right back screen, make sure everyone feels good and keep going. As always, Strahd does involve some themes that might be uncomfortable for some audiences. Body horror, violence, <clears throat> sexual encounters. All of them consensual because anything not that would not, I don't want to do that. It's my game and I'm the DM and I'm God and I say no. Um, uh, <laughs> we're going to try to keep it PG-13 for y'all. That being said, there's some people at the table not naming names. It might go a, l a little bit further than that. But we're going to do our best to keep it PG-13. I don't know what you're implying. <laughs> Talking about me. <laughs> I'm sure we have, we, we certainly have not crossed that line already mm -hmm. in the first two minutes yeah no. <laughs> that was that was just mouth flapping noises that's the sound a dog makes when he sticks his head out the window i'm yeah. feeling a very pious nun <laughs> oh god a very pious nun extremely yes. pious right. pure in fact i'm gonna i'm gonna get right into it <clears throat> sorry one of the things i prepared is suddenly uh, not on my screen. It's okay. I've got it now. Um, you all have been recruited by the Church of Tamora, which is where you unfortunately now find yourselves. Maybe some of you feel like your skin is itching or crawling being in such a holy place, but money is money. The promise of wealth or maybe even something better has brought you here. For what purpose? Tis simple. To defeat the vampire lord of Ravenloft. Mm. Saying this is a pious old woman, stoop-shouldered, her face lined like crumpled paper, her demeanor and voice raspy like paper as well. She glares at all of you and says, the oracle said you'd sign, and before you, suspended in air, hovers, much like the texture of her skin, a parchment, old, wizened, and thrumming with power. Arcane ruins are written upon it. Underneath is a single empty line, and she brandishes towards you a red quill the feathers of which kind of vibrate in the air and feel strange when you touch them. She beckons the first of you forward, angrily. You! Hoorah! Uh, Cat! Yes. And take a step forward. Uh, Pura is a... Uh, kind of rough tabaxi and um, with uh, uh, tortoiseshell fur carrying a uh, shotgun <laughs> strapped across her back. Love it. What do you want? It's more like what you want. We both know you're going to sign the contract. Speak your price. Hmm, my price. Hmm? Well, let's see. For me to sign this contract, I'm going to require quite a bit of gold. I have a a new branch of a bookshop I need to open. Eight thousand gold, agreeable? Agreed. Simple. This is a paltry sum for the Order of Tamora. Sign, if your lack of opposable thumbs will allow it. I have thumbs. Reaches out and grabs. I assume there's a pen. <laughs> a quill, yeah. The red, the a red quill. quill. Uh, and 
sign. As the tabaxi signs, you all see them disappear. She beckons to the next in line, her ruby eyes boring through you. Her, the skulls, or the bones of her skull kind of jutting through her paper thin skin. You there, gnome! I, I do have a name. Uh, Speak it then. It's uh, Matthias. Uh, you knew that when you summoned me here to help you with your problem. Um, so I would appreciate, madam, if you address me by name. As I am the tallest gnome in all the lands. <laughs> Hmm. Does Matthias actually look like the tallest gnome in all the land? Oh yeah, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just making an audio thing, audio adjustment on my end. I realized there was some echo. It should be fixed now. Ah, yes. I nearly had you confused for a very short human. You'll do. What's your price? For someone so tall, what else could you want for in life, Matthias? <laughs> well, you know, materials to build things, because that's what I do. Uh, I, I like to tinker and toy, and I know it sounds stereotypical for a gnome, but, you know, uh, I'm here to blow up some shit. <laughs> Very well. Three barrels of liquid dragon's breath. Is this payment... Sufficient for you upon your return, should you return. Mm. Now, could you throw in a funnel for the journey there? And then I, I think I'm all set, madam. A funnel? Yes, it's, it's kind of wide at the top, small at the bottom, has a nice little thing, you know, put stuff in bottles. Like a you jug? one? Of sorts, but there's no container, if you will. It's open at the top and at the bottom, if you know what I'm talking about. So a so, jug with the bottom cut off? Th that'll, that'll do, because I don't think you're going to get it. <laughs> she just, just takes a nearby jug, smashes the bottom of it, and hands it to you. That, yep, that'll do. Thank I you. I hold our covenant completed. Sign. I, I will sign the paperwork. This is very delicate. Okay. Uh, and I would I like, like to I sign as more. big as how I think I am. Just Matthias. You're off the line. <laughs> Does it matter? My signature's on the paper. You're welcome. As you say this, you disappear from sight. <laughs> leaving behind our two remaining party members. She looks at you now, Veth almost as though we're praising you up and down. What do you bring to the table? The Oracle said, are you sure about this one? I bring whatever I wish to bring to the table. And that's not necessary for you to know, is it? This one makes me feel something strange in my down unders. All right, fine. What do you want? I want the most beautiful face in all the realm. That is what I want. You want a new face? Yes. Well, you might need one after this journey, after where you're going. All right, fair enough. Sign. Fine. She'll raise a extremely gnarled hand and write her signature. Leaving only you, Pip. Well, I bet you're shaking in your boots now, alone. Do I look like I'm shaking in my boots? And Pip Pip has, um, despite her best intention, she's wearing a trench coat and has a very sort of 30s noir style about her. Um, but she has these big, almost anime eyes. <laughs> Just a little bit 
too adorable for her own good, despite what she's trying to achieve with her, you know, hardened detective. So yeah, you stroll into my, uh, in, into my, well, I guess I strolled into your area and, uh, I'm the only one of these folks who can actually, who actually investigates as a career choice. So, blink, blink. Well, investigating's only half of the problem. You can't just find Strahd, you have to kill him. I think we can handle that. Wink. All right, what's your price, gumshoe? <laughs> can I pay you in gum and shoes? It's tempting. I would like, I would like a shop. I would like to have an organized owl bear workshop where the children can come and build stuffed owl bears. And then 400 gold a day for expenses. You know what? Sure. What the fuck? I've seen some shit today. You know? All right. I will give you a place where children can create owl bear constructs. Sign. And I do with a flourish. As you do, you hear her mutter, "We're gonna need a lot of owl bear corpses." <laughs> and the world turns to mist around you. You. Don't remember exactly how you found out that you were pre sort of approved for this contract. At some point, some oracle said you were all destined to sign and thus you found yourselves in the church and now you find yourselves falling through endless space. It's cold, it's empty, it's unfeeling. It kind of feels like your limbs are falling asleep. Pins and needles everywhere. You experience smells, sights, slowly. After the complete absence of everything, things start to creep in, kind of like the sun coming out after a rainstorm. You feel stone. You smell moss. It feels damp. It feels cool. And before you know it, you begin to see things, shapes at first, and then finally your vision becomes clear, kind of like putting on spectacles. At first, you wonder if the graphics haven't loaded in yet. Everything around you looks gray. And then you realize you're looking out over the edge of what appears to be a floating island. And there is nothing but gray abyss below and around you. As you look across the horizon, you see scattered like a broken diamond, an archipelago of other islands kind of just suspended in this strange mist. You've heard of it. The Shattered Realm, the Dread Realm of Barovia. Yeah. Get, get your tongue. No, it's just smaller than I expected. <laughs> That's what the... Uh, that was too easy. That's what they all say. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I you, you can't that imagine lot? that they want to say much to you. I'm sorry. I'm just, mm. do you hear that a lot? Uh, just <laughs> smaller than what I expected. Yeah. Well, you know, it's the log largest gnome in the world. You know. That's not necessarily proportional to other things. You know that. Right? It seems like it would be a bit well, of a disappointment. <laughs> If well, that were the case. Anyone ever the world, uh, yes, expectations. You can disappoint your lovers just like you do your parents. Oh. <laughs> <that was> cool. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. By the end of this, you're going to be in my sack if you get my drift. <laughs> so Beth, Beth will smile at you a little bit too close. And right. from a distance, she looks beautiful. But when you look closer, it's like the skin on her face is being held up. Like it's almost stapled to her face and pulled taut. Ugh. There's a little bit too much gum around her smile. There's yep. little bits of sinew that you can see around the edge, just around the hood. Um, I don't back off. 
but I do say you remind me of my ex-wife. Uh, when we buried her after the kobolds got a hold of her. You know, I'm still down if you are. Whoa. What? Okay, look. I'm sorry for your loss. That sounds terrible, but you're Don't be. She was a opening bitch. up a lot of trauma <laughs> right immediate, immediately upon meeting you, and it was more than I was prepared for. I feel that I should be insulted by this comparison, but for some reason, I think your wife escaped a poorer fate. No, actually, I did. <laughs> when she left, she gave all the money to the kids, and I got to go explore and live my dreams out, blowing shit up. Are we in danger? More than we would have been? I don't know. Right from the gnome? Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Could be. Look, um, just, just so I have this right, mm -hmm. um, Veth. Correct. Matthias. Bam. Nailed and it. Pip, correct? At your service. Wink. Great. And Great. you are aptly named Bura. Yes, that would Great. be it. I see. Well, I think that it's time we undergo our task, don't you think? Well, I would like to get paid, so it is, uh, yes, I would agree. <laughs> mm-hmm. And where exactly are we headed to, uh... Seems like that's information we should have, uh... I got this, and I start looking around to see if I can find anything that might indicate where we should be headed. Yeah. As you look around, you realize that the island you're on... Sorry, I have a hair in my mouth. <clears throat> oh, that's is, that's Perus' I'm, fault. I'm, no, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I make pens to get everywhere. I, I apologize. Ah! Lint rollers. As, as you look around, you realize on this sort of smallish island that is suspended precariously in the gray abyss, you're not exactly alone. In the center, almost like a perfect emerald, is a greenhouse built around an octagonal tower made of marble, crested in silver. The only other structures around you are suspended bridges leading to other islands. The late afternoon is sun, is is the, the late afternoon sun is lazy, like it's waking up from a long nap and isn't quite ready to get up yet. It almost feels fake in the sky. There's no warmth coming from it, and the light is kind of like moonlight, barely bathing over you. There's absolutely no one you can see in sight. You do notice some motion coming from the greenhouse. Can I tell what is moving? Give me a perception check. So that's a 14. Um, something faint. Almost looks uh, ethereal or ghost-like in nature. Hmm. A strange figure. Uh, hardly humanoid. So there's something there. Someone, something. Someone or I, something? One of the two. Yes. Oh. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Can I, uh, One of the may I rule that I have a magnifying glass with me or a, some sort of telescopy goodness? <laughs> yeah. As an investigator? How close are so you I to will, the greenhouse? Uh, we can start going towards it, yeah? Uh, that's Maybe 150 feet-ish? Sure. I mean, it yeah. seems that that's the only place we can go here. It is very clear that we have a destination before us. Yeah, let's maybe go. let's be a little cautious, yes? I mean, sure. I mean, or we could just light it up. 
Um, actually, I can do something. I have, um... You know what? Sure, why don't you go take her? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Flying, um, it around Pip is a small bat. Um, I, I do have a familiar who I could send over. And then we light it up. And then we light it sure. up. Sure. That seems like a plan. Mm. Love a good plan. Um... It's about this time where we kind of realize there's kind of like a robotic dog that has also been teleported with me. <laughs> I smooth forgot I had one. I'm not going to lie to you, Chad. Uh, so <laughs> it took a minute for it to arrive. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. a little delay yeah. in the transmission. The magical transportation is and, not uh, like mechanical objects and therefore took a little bit of time. They prioritizes like, uh, the humanoids uh, and then moved on to the Exactly. Uh, the, they didn't the know it belonged to me. It just kind of slowly rolled up. I would like to sit on my uh, St. Bernard-esque steel defender <laughs> and just wait it out. All right. The little bat flaps on precarious little wings. What is its name, Pip? Um, I'm sorry, I'm Pip. That's me. I'm Pip. <laughs> I know my I own name. I thought you were looking it up. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were just uh, lost in I, I, Yes, yes. Always. I always have a plan. I know exactly what I'm doing. I was letting you all speculate. Uh, my familiar's name is Ollie. Ollie? Mm-hmm. Ollie As in, uh, flaps Ollie, forward. Ollie, Ollie, Oxenfree. On on precarious wings, kind of like dropping an altitude and then flipping back up, dropping an altitude and then flipping back up. <sighs> gotta go fast, gotta go fast. <laughs> You're you familiar with the theme song? song? <laughs> yes. You, you hear it's fantastic. It's a, except in the middle of the night, it can get really exhausting. I apologize in advance. You hear a faint flop as it smacks against the greenhouse glass, lands on the floor, peeks through with two large amber eyes, and then you see this tiny little ball with wings, really more of a fur ball than a bat, come flipping back, kind of barely hovering two feet off the ground. That's very cute. <laughs> I have done the reconnaissance. And what did you see? A frog. A frog. A frog with a hat. A fake frog with a hat. A frog with a hat. A fake frog with a hat. A ghost frog with a hat. Oh. And fancy feet. And fancy... You know, of all the things I thought you were going to say, it wasn't that. The frog doesn't have a cane, does it? Ah, uh, it might have, yeah. <laughs> God damn it. I cannot confirm nor deny. There is a, Canes there was a frog. There was, uh, oh, well, okay, so there was lily pads in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, go on. Right, there, was it sick? Yeah, there were water lilies in, mm -hmm. um in these boxes okay. in the greenhouse. That'll light up real well. And there was like all these labels on the boxes with the water lilies. It was beautiful. What did they say? As the sunlight came in through the green tinted glass, it looked like the world had come alive once more in this dreadful place. Ali, have you been going to those book readings again? You're getting quite narrative and descriptive. I like it. He whips out a black beret and puts it on his head side. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thus far, your familiar is my favorite creature I've met. It's very charming and very positive. I like it. If the frog is singing, I'm setting it on fire. It I don't disagree. Singing, it was counting. counting. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Well, hmm. All right, let's. What number was it counting to? Was it counting up? Was it counting down? It was counting its bags. Bags. Let me, um, you know what? Why don't we just go take a look? If it doesn't seem aggressive, we can probably just talk to it. Hmm? And if it is aggressive? 
I will I drink its blood in abundance and thereby take on its powers and become oh, something oh. greater than myself. I like the way you think, Ali. We you're... should eat its liver. Veth, you have something? <laughs> on Honestly, no. I feel like this is just the start of what things we're going to see in here on the way that we go. Let's just go find this ghost frog. You ghost frog. All perceive ghost frog. towards the greenhouse. There is a single door that looks almost like rose quartz set in this beautiful sort of structure that's around you, kind of created of crystalline octagonal shapes placed within each other. And to your surprise, Ollie was correct. There are these long sort of gray symmetrical troughs inside each of them with water lilies with very long labels affixed to the outside of them and sure enough you hear it a small jingling and then a jangling and then the door bursts open and out comes a frog with a top hat a waistcoat and a pocket watch he is wearing wingtip shoes and when he sees you all he excitedly gives you like a little curtsy uh, oh so are we Omu Lilypad, Lord and Curio Consigner, very pleased to meet you. Add uh, great things. How's it going? Um, I don't like this. It's going great. Mm -hmm. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Another great day in the dread domain. I'm sorry, what was your name? Omu. Omu. Oh, oh, Omu. Oh, Omu. Oh, Omu, just as me mum gave it to me when I was a wee tadpole. <laughs> uh. When I was <clears throat> nary but an egg in me mum's body, they decided that Omu would be my name, and here I am. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Omu, sir, uh... Mm. Are you by chance uh, the ghost frog that that flying rat thing told us about? Well, ghost, I am not. Mm -hmm. Very not much alive, frog, I am, then. unlike most of the people in this here realm, which makes you valuable customers. What is it that uh, you sell? Mm -hmm. oh, well, all kinds of things, really. What is it that you want to buy? That was oddly non-specific. Hmm. I have adventuring gear. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That Do I am you? more than happy to offer to some of you, I suppose. Well, now, uh, Mr. Omu. Uh, do you by chance have anything that will fit the world's largest note? <laughs> I do, you see. As a purveyor of rare antiquities, it is my <laughs> goal to provide you do-gooders, okay-gooders. Remains with... to be seen. We haven't done anything yet. <laughs> she I looks would like prefer do-gooders. We're in discussions, yeah. We'll negotiate later. Look, yeah. um, I don't have any money. I'm going to be frank with you because uh, you seem like an upstanding gentleman. Um, is there some sort of barter system? If you know what that is, I don't know because I don't speak frog well, on a daily basis. Well, it just so happens that all of my gear is gratis. Provided Grot. that you're here Jeez. to kill the dread lord and free us from this horrible existence from which every single day I ask to be rid of. Uh, the dread lord, would that by chance be, uh, Shrahad? The one and same. Yeah. Does everyone know that we're here to kill Strahd? Because that seems the same thing. unfortunate. Oh, were you trying to do a undercover mission? Oh, that's rather unfortunate for you lot, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> See, but you came me... down like comets right out of the sky and landed straight on your bums for like six days now. We're just watching, waiting for you to land. I set oh. up my shop here about a week ago. Wait. 
I and wasn't aware that a woman just, was going to give us the flashiest entrance possible. Oh, super flashy. It even said, right. behold, slayers of Strahd. And then you just came down like four <laughs> beautiful strokes in the sky made of glitter. Well, they gave us a grand entrance, y'all. The only thing we're missing is a little bit of fireworks, some food, and some good women. I think we're going to be the ones that are on fire if Strahd already knows we're coming. It does seem like a Come distinct on. possibility. Unfortunate. Mm. I mean, so tell us more about this year, I suppose. Does anyone remember? Can we, can we, can we renege on this contract? I this distinctly is... remember not reading the contract. I uh, definitely did not read it. Look, uh, reading is not really my forte. I do read sometimes when I want to make stuff to blow stuff up. But I, just figured, I mean, yeah. sometimes you just go on a good word of faith. You know what I'm saying? Isn't I that exactly me. what Miss, M- Mr. Miss, we uh, are uh, uh, Mr. Omu here yeah. is going to do? He's going to help us out. We're going to blow up some shit, and then we go and take it home and get my dragon's breath. We're no, going to die. We can't blow up everything. It's going to take us a long time. No, I don't know fine. if blowing things up will help, but mm-hmm. there are certain relics scattered around the realm that if you were to collect, would most likely enable you to defeat the Dreadlord. Well, that's convenient. As you can see, his return has not boded well for us. Barovia is a ruin of its former self. You know, this floating island archipelago system, not ideal, makes the morning commute a bit longer than I'd like. Right, it seems like it'd be uh, difficult. Uh, So uh, what weapons uh, or magical uh, procurities do we need to procure to uh, blow up uh, said, uh, Dread Lord. Well, I know someone who might be able to help you with that, but I can't let you go off without some good token of my good yes. will. We will take whatever you have, considering you may get it back in a week when we're dead. Well, again, it's free, so why not take it? Mm. And, oh gosh, now I'm wondering... Let's if clarify the terms of this here. Do we owe you anything if we take these items? Are these items cursed? Are you trying to kill us? Are you having expectations of uh, investigation into your ex-partners, either business or personal, their legal dealings, their personal dealings, Uh, a rival company? Uh, Pip. uh, Yes. I think what the good frogman is trying to do is give us free shit. Uh, I have no problems with it being cursed, uh, with it not being able to help because it's free. And I think we should just be thankful that someone in this new um, terrible land would want to help us out. Well, it didn't used to be terrible, and hopefully if you slay the Dreadlord, it won't be terrible anymore. Just convince me that you're not Strad in disguise assessing the threat, because I don't think we're doing a very good job, if so. Roll insight. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> so the frog, or the bat, said the frog was a ghost. In looking at this frog, mm-hmm. is it, does it look like a ghost? Give me a perception check. That one. Two. Oh. <laughs> uh, you are convinced that mm. this frog is not a dreadlord, but perhaps something altogether more dangerous. You are sure there's more to him than meets the eye. Something powerful. What are you? What are you? What lurks underneath that green skin and waistcoat? Whoa! You have 23 perception, Jack. Oh! Pura, you would recognize immediately that this is a major image. They're projecting a major image. The frog is not actually here. Uh, where, um, if it's not too rude for me to ask, where are you actually located? Well, I... I You mean it has duplicity of form? It's a deity! It's an illusion. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate your <laughs> dramaticness, but um, it's an illusion. Happens to the best of us, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Who am I actually speaking to? 
Well, you're speaking to me, but like I said, I set up shop here a week ago when I saw those comets first start streaking in. Then I had to go tend to other business. As for where I am, I'd rather not disclose, at least until I'm sure of your motives. But in the interim, I've set up some gear for you to peruse. It's not cursed, although I don't think the gnome much cares, and it is free. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, you know what? Great. Appreciate it. Oh. oh, ready? Oh, no. I want all of it. It is readable. Let me know if it is. Yeah. It's readable. Okay. We've got. <laughs> Demon armor. <laughs> Let me know when you want me to scroll up. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Head. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, that's nice. Those are nice. Yep, Try keep going. Right mm -hmm. keep, keep it coming. What are you buying? What are you what selling? Are you selling? <laughs> Stranger. <laughs> You're too good at that, Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, great, 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 great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, God. Ooh, that one looks Angle nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, hold on now. We got some dragon scale mail over there. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but, uh, mm -hmm. Bag Ooh, of tricks is always cool. fun. Uh, mm -hmm. The last. And this is a. Uh, can only have one of these or mm -hmm. all of them. Or I would like to take all of it. <laughs> no. I, well. well, now it's got to be something else in case you die for the adventurers who come after you. One package, don't be greedy. Oh, so I see. We're not a one-time destined. We're sort of like you know oh. easily replaceable. There will be others chosen if we die. Well, so yes, and they'll come in on shiny comets, and then I'll purvey them with goods, hoping that hopefully one of them will release me from this wretched existence. And how many are have already come? Is what I want to know. You're the first inaugural <laughs> group, which is why I've got a special gift for all of you. And then he gestures over to the right, where you notice four packs that have been kind of wrapped up in what looks to be like silver cloth that's got this like beautiful purple brocade sort of embroidery on it. Inside mm. each of these is a robe of useful items with Ooh. the following patches. One silvered weapon of your choice, an armor of your choice, 30 feet of silk rope, five stakes, 20 silvered ammunition of your choice, a spyglass, a compass, a hide shield, and a tombstone. For your inevitable demise, see? They come pre-engraved. So uh, that was a silver weapon, armor, five stakes, 20 silver ammo or mm -hmm. arrows or whatever. Yeah. Spyglass, yep. compass, hide shield, and... Tombstone. Tombstone. Okay. Uh, tombstone. Uh, <clears throat> uh, why? Why the tombstone? That seems a little awkward. Are we supposed to bury ourselves? Is that why? Uh, or do you just expect us to die and bury each other? Honestly, I don't care one iota either way. Well, let's see. Who wants what? We have all options in front of us. Ah, yes. I am the referee of the magic item draft. Each of you, I suppose, can give your top three options, and then uh, it's my job to ensure that things go fairly. Hmm. Does anybody have a preference? Oh, uh, do we get to pick one item or one pack? I missed that conversation. One earlier. pack. I see. Gotcha. All right. Um. I personally am interested in the pack that contains all the tattoos. Hmm. Ah, I see this one here. What? Seems like it could be fun. That does make sense, doesn't it? But 
Uh, now, question. Do I have to get tattooed, or do they just magically appear on me? Because otherwise you're going to have to shave me. They'll magically appear on you. You see, they're the kind you just press them on, get them a little wet with saliva and what have you, and you just peel them off, and there they are. That is very good, because a shaved cat is a sad sight. Look, I love good shaved or with fur. It doesn't matter. I'm versatile. I'm much more a bigger fan of hairy pussy. (laughs) Good to know. I Thank you, Hedra Group, for sponsoring this six-part <laughs> series of um, One Night Strong. <clears throat> but I can also see uses for the pack that has the tentacle rod in it, if I'm being honest. <laughs> it's hard well, for me to see those. Um, got so hmm. many decisions. Uh, I have the PDF of this if you want me to send it over to any of y'all. I did save it separate. I think if I was gonna pick something for myself, I would also like said tentacle rod pack. Uh, I mean, a portable hold is also very nice. Uh, That's a but lovely one. I can't really use any of the other things in that. Uh, what else is in there? Uh, um, the a wand you could the trade. A spell bead of. Is that the one you're looking at? Yes. Yeah. Um, if there's but, something you want in one and not in the other, then we can trade. If you, hmm. I know I said you didn't need your Discord open, but if you look at Discord, this the relevant page is already in there. I uh, am. Um, thank you. I just Ooh. wanted to be cute and have physical. No. Nope. That's awesome. I love and it. And I'm also currently looking things up that as we. Like, Cool yep. There. <laughs> Just kidding. That was a spoiler. Close your eyes. Oh, what? Wait. What's the spoiler? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Oh. Magic. I wasn't looking anywhere. Hmm. Magic. Um. Magic. Perfect. There we are. Look at that. Um. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I don't need a uh, lay cloak of lay elven, uh, elven kind, uh, but I could use everything else there. Cloak of elven kind is a lovely thing. I could so, certainly make use of that uh, if you would like to share, perhaps. Um, uh, that lantern of revealing could be quite useful as well for hidden things, mm. things we can't see. Honestly, at some point. all of them are pretty great. But I curated them myself are. to give you the best chances of not being gibleted while in this realm. Mm. Gibleted uh, is... Yeah. Um, is that a term you just chose or something that is actually a real concern? Here's my uh, Who can say really, ma'am? I'm going to put my top three in here for myself. I'm going to say the tattoos, the one that has the braces of archery in it, or the one with the rapier, the boots of elven kind, and the dust of disappearance. Mm-hmm. Those would be my top three for myself. Um, I'm actually going to write that down. Ah, where did I put my pen? There it is. Okay, so which were your top three in order? Uh, the tattoo case because it's interesting. Um, mm-hmm. The gray bag of tricks, the braces of archery, and the spell bead. And then the rapier, boots of elven kind, and dust of disappearance. Hmm. Okay. Jen, thoughts? I would say the... Uh, the... Uh, the Ring of Evasion, Sovereign Glue, and, Sovereign Glue, and Potion of Etherealness, maybe? Uh, the Portable Hole? And the, um, actually, I think the Portable Hole is my f- first choice. Um, and then the Tentacle Rod, Cloak of Elven Kind, Ring of Shooting Stars. Is the Tentacle Rod third choice or second? Let's make that third. 
Persephone. Okay, so my choices are the bag of beans, the spell bead set, or the portable hole. Wait, uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds right. And Athena? Uh, for me personally, uh, I'm looking at maybe the uh, tentacle rod pack, the uh, lightning javelin, because I like to throw stuff even though I'm tiny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Uh, and possibly, uh, Ooh. I'm still looking, so give me a second. Uh. <laughs> I think, okay, while you're still looking, I think everyone else can have their first choice, actually. Because mm -hmm. um, there's actually no conflicts on here. So. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah. Um, so that's perfect. So. Pura, you get the Eldritch Claw tattoo, the Life Will tattoo, and the Psychic Absorbing tattoo pack. Great. And then Pip, you get the Portable Hole, the Plus One Wand of the War Mage, and the Spell Bead of Contingency. Awesome. Veth, you get the Bag of Beans, the Necrotic Absorbing tattoo, and the Spell Bead for Heroes Feast. And Bomb. if you're happy with your choices, Matthias, you can actually just straight up get the Tentacle Rod, the Cloak of Elvenkind, and the Ring of Shooting Stars. Okay. Wonderful. I'm giving you a moment so you can add it to your character sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm still making my character because that's how I roll. <laughs> um, for the it spell beads, it's a wondrous item. It functions mostly the same as a spell scroll. Um, and spells cast this way have a saving throw DC of 15 and a spell attack bonus of plus 7 if you want to like notate that somewhere. But it's basically just like a spell scroll mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes. What are we talking about? Sorry, I was writing down stuff. Uh, the spell beads. Um, they they also come back after a long rest or next day, right? That's yeah, what I read it's, online. It's yeah. the same as a spell scroll. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, second, sorry. Aren't, don't spell scrolls stop? Don't they like disintegrate after one use? They're singular use as far they as they do, but the prayer beads are not. Well, these are spell beads, not prayer beads. Hold on. All I could find was prayer beads. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's an item that has been invented for mm -hmm. this adventure. Yeah. Cool. So, so that one is a one time use. It's good to know. Time. Okay, good. If afterward we want to, I, I mean, I'm not. I, I have no idea what we'll end up doing this time, but there's a solid chance that I, I, I'm certainly saving mine for another day. Uh, I hope. <laughs> for sure. uh, uh, so perhaps we can, if we take a rest or something, just consider what those items may be as we examine them a bit more closely and mm -hmm. add them to our sheets at that time. Mm hmm. Excellent. Yeah. As you finish picking up your gear packs, the remaining kind of begin to magically shift and stack up into this perfect pyramid against the wall, <laughs> squirreling away their magical belongings inside each, sealed with a ethereal golden padlock on each one. As this happens, Omu kind of takes on a bit of a different demeanor. Well, with the formalities out of the way, we gotta go to the marble tower. Uh, and get your your fortunes read. Oh, 
Interesting. It's customary. It's kind of our welcome to Barovia special. I'm gonna meet, you know, you're gonna meet, ah. Uh, well, quite frankly, my best friend. You're also welcoming here. You're it makes me concerned. Very what concerned. Is, what is your best friend's name? Gertrude. Ah. Gertrude. Ah. <laughs> Gertrude. Ah. Gertrude. Ah. Gertrude. Ah. Gertrude. Is the R uh, her last name, or their last name, or is it one name, Gertrude? Well, it's one name. I have difficulty saying it that way, but the way you're saying it, I believe is the correct way. Gertrude. Gertrude. Ah. Ah. Great. Ah. Really enjoy Gertrude. the music. Ah. Are, are you ready to go see her? Have your fortunes told? Kind of get your cherries popped, relatively speaking. Some of your cherries are probably already popped, but you know how it is with these Mine things. are rotted and planted in the ground when nothing will sprout. Let's go. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> right, right then. Right this way. And he hippity hops in a strange bumbling fashion, the bells on his wingtip shoes clinging and clanging with every step towards this strange ivory tower set in the middle of the greenhouse. Here, the coldness that you were feeling outside kind of coalesces and forms this thick mist that kind of rests around your feet, occasionally forming strange figures in the vapor, hands, faces, things you've never seen before. Oh. As you walk, a cold light begins to spill from these strange rods on the floor. Uh, they resemble different kinds of gemstones and, and like rose quartz, amethyst, opal, labradorite. And each of these rods kind of lets out a small ethereal glow in these different circles as you get closer to the tower, or as you enter, sorry. This is the sort of pastel vaporwave dream you come into as you come in under the arced door of the tower, and that's when you see her. Cold like the moonlight. Impossibly pale, impossibly thin. A woman smiles at you enigmatically. Around her, almost like a crown, are several other faces, but they're inanimate and kind of rest in the mist. Almost like an optical illusion. You're not sure if they're there or they're real. Hmm. Each of them seems to be posed towards her, kind of consulting with her. Like that one famous Da Vinci painting that I can't remember the name of right now. The one with the Jesus. That one. <laughs> the one with the... <laughs> I... <laughs> I don't know. White people shit. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are we talking Last Supper or? Yes, no, thank oh, you. Thank okay. You. Oh, oh, yes. I'm such a professional mm. DM. I have half that white people shit in me, so I guess. <laughs> you know. Um. Hello. Excuse me. She's looking right at you, son. No. Oh, woman. Which face? That person. One of them's looking. Just say something. Uh, excuse me, uh, madam. Are you Gertrude? Duh. <laughs> so, I it. hate that you've taken this stupid speech affectation <laughs> my character had and ran with it. You see the braid kind of over one shoulder. Her hair, like, deepest quartz, kind of raise up off her shoulder a bit as she smirks and giggles a little bit. The color rises in her cheeks. Um, and uh, with one heavily eyelinered eye, she grins at all of you and says, ah, I see our main cast has arrived. Oh. I I'm sorry, are we giving a performance or? Oh, you well, have many faces. Well, I would love to know where you got on them. 
ah, well, these faces are the faces that in some ways will determine your future. Or maybe your past. Or maybe your present. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard to tell. It comes and goes. May I take one of them to wear occasionally? Yes, of course. And she, with one magical flourish of her hand, takes the faces and out of them forms a single leaflet of paper and hands it to you. I take hmm. it. And you see the faces. I will actually hand you this uh, handout in Discord. I already have it printed out. Know. But I wanted to throw it on stream. Um, I love it. It looks really good. It's <laughs> so cool. Ooh. All right. For your records, it is also in the Discord channel. Hey. How does this allow me to wear their faces, though? Maybe you could cut holes out of it and hold it up. <sighs> it's a joke. This is not what I was intending. And she, like, reaches for her face and pulls it up a little bit more, slightly sloughing off on one side. Ah, but Duh. if you're successful here, then you'll get what you want, right? And her eyes oh. seem to, like, look through you. They have, once again, a Labradorite-esque sheen to them. And her skin is lo looks cool like marble again, the color now having faded. Interesting. Mm. It seems this transparent bitch knows so much about us already. Oh, mm -hmm. more than you could imagine. Hmm. Mm. Uh, well, uh, it, we were told that you were going to read our fortunes. Oh, yes. Well... Fortunes or misfortunes, I suppose. I do hope they're fortunes, though. What do you think? As today has gone, misfortunes. Oh. Are you having a bad day? Well. Well. We were sent here to, as you know, kill Strahd, but everyone knows we're here, which is going to make our job exceedingly difficult. Roll persuasion. Oh, good. <laughs> Where did I put my... There it is. Um, persuasion. Four. <laughs> hmm. I don't think it was as difficult as you're saying it is. Maybe you're already defeated. <gasps> Have you lost to yourself in your mind? I'm sorry. I don't think so. Oh. Well, you're never going to win with that attitude. I wonder if I can help cheer you up. Restore your self-confidence. Hmm. Well, I'm confident enough. Oh, oh, you're confident enough for everyone. I believe that's also known Denver. as delusion. <laughs> well, I know you like me, girl. <laughs> A delusion to one is real to another, I suppose. As she says this, a single kind of like rectangle forms in the air. Like, how do I describe this? Almost like a dimension door opening, but much smaller. Mm. It is red in color. It shimmers there for a moment. You see a face with horns reflected in the door. And then as it opens, instead a card comes levitating out. Oh. The sun. That's for you, little kitty. For I me? played the deck. You just seem so sad and pathetic. I was like, maybe I'll make his path a little easier. Uh, thank you. What does the sun mean? Well, um, I guess it's the way forward or the way back. I don't know. Sometimes they get confused. Uh, yeah, but maybe it'll ease your passing where you're going. 
I, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. It'll maybe hasten your way. Or make things more difficult. Oh. No, no, no. Hasten. For sure. Yeah. What? Uh, um, I, I trust you. Thank you. Oh, you trust me? Ooh. Mm -mm. You Have messed I up. Have that before? Trust, trust. Oh, yeah, no, I think people trust me a lot. I have friends, I think, yeah. Trust is a river that stems from delusion as well. I'm just trying to be nice. Oh, I see what you did there. Deluge, delusion. Oh, that's a fun play on words. You must be smart. You must be Veth. I am Veth, yes. Well, Veth, <laughs> do you feel lucky? Oh, wait, no, that was for you. Almost Sorry, exclusively Bip. not, no. Do you feel lucky? Uh, I. <laughs> Pip takes Do out ya? a coin and flips it. Uh, I, I suppose so, yes. Yes, I do. All right, you pick next. <laughs> All right. And I reach out and I draw a card. Roll a d8 for me. Okay. It helps if I don't throw my dice. Uh, that is a four. Temperance. Hmm. I wonder if this, what that means. <gasps> does that mean you have a temper? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> she does. Pip, old... Pip looks up with her big old anime eyes and just blinks and goes, a temper. <gasps> Me? Never. Wow. Blink, blink. What do you think it means? Temperance is moderation, yes? Keeping a balance. Walking the tightrope. Ooh, balance is important. Balance in all things, really. Do you feel like you're balanced? She turns to you, Beth. Again, almost exclusively no. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> what do you think your card will say? Hmm. If I had to guess, it'd be the moon. Really? That's interesting. Well... Here's what I think. Or the also. tower. The lovers. The one time I don't do my nails. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Didn't Can't everyone relate. see that coming? The lovers. Are you for real? Well, you never know. I mean, some of the people you're going to meet. Who knows? Don't go falling in love with me, though. <laughs> you see I the color rise in her cheeks no again. Chance. Uh, you know what? Let let us let you dream. Uh, and she let's... leans in and smiles. The uh, skin around her lips is pulled just a little bit too tight, so you can see a little bit too much gum and a little too much nope. teeth. Uh, Matthias would like to Captain Morgan stance and try to make himself known to Beth. See? Maybe the I would rather my face you. finish falling off. Don't worry, girl. I know you coming. <laughs> I'm going to go plant a bean. <laughs> okay, you go plant a bean. Mm -hmm. As you're doing so, Gertruda looks you up and down, Matthias. You so. have kingly energy. <laughs> you know it, baby. <laughs> Hierophant. Uh. Mm hmm. Mm. Uh. What does that leave? Do you guys think there's more wheels in the world or doors? I mean, probably more wheels to get to the doors if okay. you get my drift. You're right. Oh. Wheels it is. Whoop. 
What does it say on the bottom there? I can't quite see. Wheel of Fortune. Hmm. hmm. You know, I don't remember the ones these last ones go in. Or do I? I know. We'll let fate decide. I like it. Around her, three ethereal cards appear. They start whirring with impossible speed and then lay themselves down magically in front of you. This is what I get for wanting to do practical effects. I love it. The wheel, I absolutely the love world, it. It's so worth it. The hermit and the tower. Mm hmm. Well, we've already seen the tower, haven't we? Where Omu was? The tower is not a literal card. Well, Veth says be. as she's digging in the dirt with her bare hands, gnarled fingers just ripping through the underbrush. <laughs> yeah, get in that dirt, girl. Mm. But, well, let's make things a little bit more interesting. You need relics. Oh, yes. Okay. You need I'm in. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Got well, my attention now. Where are the relics going to be, though? Ooh. That's the question. And you see her kind of create, this time, four golden cards that remain suspended in air for a moment. They hover precariously mm. above the palm of her hand in space. Hmm. Well. What do you guys think? The Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Staves. You want us to pick one? Oh. Ace of Cups. Ace that was of I'll stand by that. Ace of Cups. My, my instinct as well. Okay. Well, looking at the order, uh, the Ace of Cups will go on. Mm, the wheel. Is that the first one you pick? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, okay. But then, where does the pentacles go? Well, the pentacle has a sort of a roundish, yes? So maybe on the world. Connecting points. Each that one of feel? these is connected to an element. If you haven't noticed, I have some familiarity with these cards. <laughs> would you would you like to tell us where they should go then, perhaps? You're right, you're right, Pip. Um Yeah, the ace of pentacles. <gasps> That's sunrise's symbol. Around like the wheel. You're right. Oh, sorry, sometimes I forget things. You're so smart and pretty. Um yeah, uh, the sunrise will cross the wheel. Yggdrasil. Da. Yggdrasil? Yeah. The world what tree? It's the world tree. What is a it's world a tree? I am a druid. I, haven't, I, I know a lot of trees. I don't know one named Yggdrasil. But, but, if you have sunrise as symbol, you'll need sunset sword. Um, oof. Well, I mean, the sun would make the most sense, but, but temperance, <gasps> weren't we talking about holding back? But what about the Hierophant? I feel like, I feel like the sword would look really cool in their hands. Damn right it looks good in my hands. I don't okay. think that's what it means. Uh... Well, that was my call. All right. I drew well, the, I drew sunset so, so. sword. You'll find it with the hero font. I'm sure you'll know it when you see it. Well, uh, if we have sunlight, then <gasps> we need moonlight. Moonlight's lash. You guys are really good at this game. But where does moonlight's lash go? 
Mm, I think you'll find the Moonlight's Fury where only the sun dares shine, don't you think? Hopefully wherever that crosses our path, Stra just walks into the daylight and makes it easy for us. <laughs> oh, Stra, yes, yes. His fury is it's fierce. But what better to protect you at night, more so than Nightfall's armor? Hmm. Well, the Hierophant can't have this cool sword and not have armor. Maybe he'll have both. Maybe he'll find out. Maybe. Well, I guess we're done here. I'm sorry, so you said Moonlight slash where? Well, it would... It would be where only the sun dares to shine, right? Which is where? Well, that's for you to find out, really. Here. I'll give the cute kitty the card. Oh, and they'll remember. Uh, thank you. Here, kitty. I have learned Takes nothing it. from this interaction except that I'm very confused and very easily so. I appreciate Pura. the card. You know what Pura means in Hindi? It means complete. Oh. It means whole. That's nice mm -hmm. to know. Maybe that means you'll come out of this hole. Maybe it means you'll come out in one piece. Will you come to see me when you're done? Yes, and I hope I do. Don't forget how I helped you guys out of this jam, okay? We won't? If you could just summarize for us the most important points there, I'm a, I'd like to write them down. She pulls out a notebook and sort of. I think it's more metaphorical than literal. Hmm. I, I have no you. idea what's going on. The wheel. That's where you'll find the Ace of Pentacles. Which is sunrise is simple. Everyone knows that. I'm sure you guys know that. And, and, and the Hierophant, and she hands this card to you, Matthias, since yep. <laughs> you strike good poses like the Hierophant, the Hierophant will have the Ace of Staves and the Ace of Swords. Ace of Staves? And I gave our wholesome kitty the sun, and that's where you'll find the Ace of Cups. It would be funny to put Moonlight's Lash with the sun. <laughs> I kind of like the contrast. <clears throat> yeah, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Well, uh, we th we thank you for your your assistance, I suppose, and you suppose. Thank you, my lady. And it, and oh. Matthias Matthias would like to do the most gracious bow in front of the madame. <laughs> You're so sweet. Well, I'll, you know. I'll help you on uh, your way. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, on the way. Uh. Yeah. <clears throat> she opens a portal behind her. Idrisel, oh. right? You were talking about uh, it. Is that where you want to go? Pura's tail fluffs up a little bit with the appearance of the portal in that she is very unsure of what's happening in this room right now. Um, before I leave, I'd like to know if I plant three of these beans in the ground, what's going to happen? Hmm. Roll persuasion. Oh, I wasn't asking. I was asking you. Oh, you were asking <laughs> Literally me. the DM, because they're already planted. They've been uh, planted. Uh, There's effects that will happen. <laughs> there are effects that will uh, happen. I don't you know don't if you want me to yet. roll, if you want to roll, or if you have your own table or whatever or anything. I do have my own table. Give me a That's moment to look through my notes. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Plant three trays beans. Mm -mm -mm. They do nothing for now as they take time to germinate. Okay. Mm. We will mm. see what they do in the future. All at right. a later time. But first, 
a small respite before our adventurers venture through the portal so that we may all get a quick drink of water and come right back. <laughs> yeah. A little stretch. Woo. Thank you so much for joining us for One Night Straw. This is the first in a six part series. Our adventurers are equipped. They know the path forward. They've had their fortunes told. Hopefully, I did not completely flub this up. I hope you're all having a good time. <laughs> no, it's no, fun. I'm, I'm, it's I'm awesome. so engaged. It's great. Right now. <laughs> we will be right I'm back in great six minutes. I, I cannot get over that voice, Persephone. Hello, and welcome back to One Night Strahd with us, your intrepid crew. <clears throat> Sorry, I was eating falafel, <laughs> and it's still stuck in my teeth. Give me a moment. I would choose now of all times to run out of water. <laughs> stuck in her teeth. Ron's has stuff stuck in her teeth. She's gonna drink some real quick. Da, 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 da. So if you never change, I love you. You're like <laughs> one of my favorite people, hands down. I love you so much too. Oh my gosh. Not me stuffing falafel into my mouth during the break. All right, so. <laughs> I had hummus too. All right, so this, this sort of strange portal appears before you, octagonal in shape, and it seems like it's almost pulling you in. It gets larger and larger and larger until it surrounds you. You feel like the edges of it are curling in a concave fashion, kind of surrounding you. And then almost with a strange, or like a, there we go. You push through this thin membrane-like barrier and find yourself in a completely altogether different place. <clears throat> uh, oh. wait a second. Notes. No, I had my notes in the right order. Now I don't. <clears throat> oh wait, that's why. I have a handout I need to give y'all. If you will all kindly. Direct your attention to the El Discordo. My favorite. El Discordo. Oh, wait, not that one. Not that one. That, one, that one's a spoiler. Don't look at that one. Don't look at that <laughs> 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 I deleted it. <laughs> She's a professional, ladies and gentlemen. Why would I name them all Map? ONS map one, ONS map two. How would I how would I know which one's the right one at that point? Okay, not that one, that one's a spoiler. The other one. Um wait, I can't show you okay, here we go, here we go. I have a physical copy of it. I'm just gonna bring that up. She's a professional, ladies and gentlemen. She's beauty. She's grace. <laughs> She'll right. punch you in the face. And there we are. Hey, yo. Yeah, I'm wondering if I can change the perspective Ooh. on this a bit. Is this place called The Brides? Haha! -ha! I'm my own technical producer. All right, there we go. <laughs> okay. You find yourselves at first in an impossibly dense forest. 
the trees here are gnarled, overgrown, greedy almost, and their roots greedy as well, delving deep into the earth into tangled messes that mimic their tangled, gnarled arms above. The brush is impossibly thick, and before you know it, you find yourselves completely and hopelessly lost. As you try to navigate your way through this mess of bark, lichen, and moss, the cold fog kind of pooling around you, chilling you to your core, you notice that the trees are beginning to kind of move away from you, almost as though letting you pass, giving you a way forward. And as they clear out before you, moving, almost beckoning you to a large clearing atop a little hill, you see a tall stone spire with a cairn piled around the base. It rises up in front of you almost supernaturally, towering down on top of you, leaving you in its strange shadow. Mm. And you notice that that is what the trees appear to be moving away from in droves, away from this cursed monument's cursed darkness. The stones stacked around the central men here have been here so long that they almost seem to form one smooth block. Where there were once etchings and where these bricks were laid together have kind of worn smooth and it's become something that looks almost as though it's coming out of the bones of the earth itself. Something not man-made, but maybe something human now or something in between. You hear Gertruda's voice very vaguely around you. You, some of you that liked her may even see her strange labradorite eyes kind of reflected in the mist. And she says, this was the Swalich forest of Barovia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, I think it was. Swalich, Swalich, I don't know. Um, and, mm. oh yeah, you're not alone. You're never alone here, so don't be afraid. It's not nearly as, as barren as it looks. <laughs> uh, the brides live here. <gasps> Strut had five of them. I guess he was kind of a player, huh? Oh, hell Strut yeah. had five brides? I yes! Five, five oh, little kids. I mean. Can you believe it? Five. And, and he got all of them to join him in his cursed on life, you know? Like... He got all of them to take the vampire's curse. <sighs> she kind of hisses oh. up in your ear, Pura. <sighs> oh, she's so cute. That makes sense. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. And... Mm, <gasps> but look there. Sunlight. And you see her, these strange eyes reflected in the mist turn, and you do see a pillar of sunlight to the north. Ooh. Ooh, wasn't that on one of our cards? I think it was. Yes, it was. No, it, it wasn't. Was, well, uh, we were I told mean, that, that the Ace of Cups was where the, the sun, the, the, it was where the, who am I? Why? I'm so confused by the travel. Um, the Ace of Cups, it was maybe. <laughs> Moonlight's Lash. <gasps> Oh right! Oh, I guess you should go there. Huh? Nightfall's armor. I don't. I don't know what you meant by it, but uh, mm. that was what you you told us. Oh, I, and look at this here cairn. There's a giant sun over a shrine. It reaches up to it like a delicate hand. My hands are delicate. I've been told they're like swamp lilies. I start leaning in real hard. Clammy and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and holding in billions of insects. Maybe. Ooh, insects. This place is probably full of those two. Maybe not. I don't hear much. Except for that strange crackling. Hmm. Crackling? Yeah. Where I come from, that's fried pig skin. <laughs> What's them cracklings? <laughs> Mm. 
I broke her again. <laughs> fucking second time this week. I hate you, Athena, but I love you. Every fucking game, you do some shit where I'm just like, what? Not the crack. <laughs> <sighs> My black ass can't play with you no more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Mm -mm. <gasps> Fried pig skin. I don't think I've ever had that. Oh, it's mm. delicious. Well, maybe we can fry some up if we get to the sunlit shrine. Bam! I mean, oh. There's more written on that monument. <gasps> But I guess you all would have to get closer to read it, huh? At this point, like, the eyes have, like, materialized into, like, a full spectral form that's standing there next to you. Yeah, so we'll, uh, call Do it a Do you know date how to then? read? That's what uh, she asks you, Matthias. Uh, yeah, you? Yes, I can. not For you, honey, I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll even blow up that shrine if that's what you want. You just I don't think that words. would take too much convinced convincing out of feeling. I think that's more than more what you want than what she wants. Let's <laughs> see what we can be learn. A good, pretty itself. consistent thing with you, I'm sure. We see if we can uh, learn from it first, perhaps, and then. Uh, I wonder what do would happen it what if will. you blew it up. Oh, that would have been I mean, interesting. Is, it, is that the word? Well, maybe. I, I, Matthias immediately starts. He gets the construct where I will start tinkering while I'm on the construct to make anything that will blow up for this beautiful spectral <laughs> being with the multi heads. She's just beautiful. I can't. I can't help myself. I can't. I can't. Matthias loves the beautiful women out there in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so you start tinkering. As you do so. Um, the rest of you notice that the forest around you has become eerily silent. Silent. The old growth trees wear their lichen beards in silence and kind of peer down at you. The trees that haven't lost their foliage are heavily laden in gold and red, almost like they've put on their best autumn finery for you today. And the sun that was only half-heartedly shining down on you before in the greenhouse is even more occluded now by a heavy blanket of clouds with only a ray or two desperately breaking through that beautiful cotton shroud to reach down to you but the warmth falls short before it hits your face well it occurs to you that maybe if you were to get lost in this wretched forest in this horrible maze you could always come back to the cairn as a waypoint hmm. you do see an ancient road laid out before you but her words hang in your mind about the fact that you are not alone I will give you time to deliberate players <laughs> Uh, what can we, is there anything that I, I'd like to sort of give everything a bit of a closer look, just giving everything a once over all around, yeah. seeing what I can find here. On the cairn? Yes. Give me In a... particular. Um, yeah, as you approach the cairn, give me an investigation check. Roll it and it is taking too long, so therefore I will roll it here. Oh, there it is. And it might, uh, that's a dirty 20. A dirty 20. Yeah, you notice runes kind of carved across the cairn. Um, let me see. What languages are you proficient in? Uh, I speak common, sylvan, and I think that might be it. Thieves can't. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, dwarven, dwarven as well, dwarvish, dwarvish. Yeah. My dwarvish is a bit rusty, but I it's dwarvish, but I do speak it. As you're looking across the ruins that are kind of densely packed next to each other, a very cramped um, kind of handwriting, you do realize with how high you rolled that it is druidic. 
So not something you can quite make out. Give me a perception check while you're here. Uh, that is an 18. As you look closer at this cairn, you notice almost like a trick of the eyes. Inscribed on it are five figures, each with intricate braid, braids in their hair, with large protruding antlers, each of them marked with a different symbol. And then you see, for a moment you almost think you're seeing double, right at the edge of the eaves of the forest that has kind of almost in a frightened fashion backed away from this cairn, you see five shadowy figures with antlers, eyes glowing, bows drawn, peering at you from the edge of the wood. Oh, good. So if the rest of us don't notice that yet, can I have walked up to check out the cairn too? Yes. Give cool. me a... Give me a um, acrobatics check. And uh, Pura has unsheathed her shotgun and is just holding it in her hands. Mm -hmm. If possible, I would kind like... Kind of just looking around just in a general vicinity. Oh, that's a 16. You are able to duck just as one... <laughs> almost like warning shot comes flying over your head. Where did that come from? Does anybody have any liquor? Like to make fire? You, this is just gonna help this work beautifully for the young lady over here. As you say that, Matthias, you notice that the apparition of Gertruda is gone. Oh, damn. Where'd everybody go? As you say, where'd everybody go? Give me an athletics check. Oh, no. Uh, we ain't so good at them athletics, you know. It's like a disease. Uh, that would be uh, a two with a negative one. <laughs> As you say this, a single arrow tinged with, like, the light of the setting sun comes arcing through the air and strikes you in the shin, dealing oh. with six piercing damage. As it does, you hear a voice deep and, and sonorous say from the eaves of the woods, Midsummer always strikes true. Whoa, uh, I thought this was winter. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, uh, my, my shin, um, mm, what? Midsummer, uh, what do you want? We don't mean you any harm. Uh, t tell me your demands and maybe we can come to some sort of agreement. Uh, do I know if the voice was female or male? Um, give me a intelligence check. Um, that Could would I... be a 24. <laughs> yes, Pura. Great. May I um, try and get out of, like, just GTFO into a shadow somewhere nearby yeah. and hide? Give me an acrobatics check. Be a 26. A 26. Was that for the intelligence check as well? To, like, see who it is? To hide. Yes. Perfect. Um, yeah. So you remember, uh, sorry, I had to remember the name, Matthias, that yep. Midsummer was the name of one of Strahd's wives. You, you immediately oh. recognize the voice as female, and you start um. to piece things together in your mind. You think that there might be five more arrows following in her wake. As you hear a kind of giggly voice, um, another arrow flies, but, it, but you manage to take cover and hide behind a tree stump that's fallen over uh, Pura. As another oh. arrow comes flying down and they're starting <laughs> to increase in speed, almost becoming oh. a volley, you're able to take cover behind the cairn, Pip. Uh, um, uh, 
Sorry, Before we get, could I glance at the uh, cairn and see if I can read it just really quick? Like yeah. at a glance. Arrows are like falling down all around you at this point, but you were able to get to the cairn successfully. Um, you are able to read in, in this sort of hurried, cramped writing uh, records of a history of an ancient druidic order. And the very last entries describe the rise of a dark and beautiful king who strides the land as a glorious wolf. Probably Strad. As these arrows are falling down all around you, Pura, you notice that there is a path hidden to your left, a place that you could maybe take. Matthias, with your check, you also notice off to your right another path. <clears throat> oh. Whereas uh. heading towards the ancient road would put you in the path of the arrows. It's possible, um, but difficult. At this point, the arrows are coming down thick, almost like never-ending rain. And I'm, I'm, I'm separated from everybody, correct? I'm behind a stump. Like, we're not next to each other anymore. Um, you're not that close to each other, no. The party right. so is somewhat gonna... separated. You are close to Matthias. The both of you kind of hung back, and the other two of your party are near the Great Cairn. Okay, uh, Matthias, there's a pathway over here. Yeah, I, I see it. Uh... Maybe a distraction is in order. Um, mi Miss uh, Jasmine, uh, would you mind me throwing said bomb in the direction of said arrows? <laughs> Throw it. I'm here and, for um, it. I'm gonna Let that fucker fly. Death and say that there's a path. Um, if you can hear me, hmm. we've got a pathway back this way to possibly go around the arrows. I will do my best to get over there. Then. Thank you, um, Buddha. What what would I have to roll? Because I know I do need a roll, a tinker roll as well, to make sure that went off uh, without uh, exploding in my face, if you will. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I also uh, want to aim. True. It exploded in your face. It did or did not. It was. Well, bad I need time. a roll to make sure I made it proper. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, and you made that roll. Uh, I hold on. Sorry. Ah. Uh, you're like, what happened to the voice? I'm looking at my sheet, y'all. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> it's all right. As I said earlier, the travel from the, the, the between the realms is challenging and sometimes affects our vocal cords. We sound a little different from time um, to time. Yeah, sometimes we sound a little different. <clears throat> uh, look what? at Miss Jasmine. Uh, oh, you so give sometimes me, I'll be the role of the make because uh, uh, slight magical. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, you can add your proficiency. Okay, uh, that would be uh, 18. You managed to create a small ticking contraption with a large amount of highly potent liquor inside. God only knows what Matthias drinks to be able to fuel such a horrid invention. It throws, <laughs> it throws, it goes flying through the air with a tick tick. Boom. Run, poor. <laughs> there is a giant explosion of splinters, leaves everywhere. You hear a faint, ah, as something is thrown aside. You hear rocks crack underneath the ex sheer explosive force of this thing. You think you have a chance to get out. There's a path to your right that you have noticed, Matthias, and you've pointed out to Pora. Pora, there's a path to your left. Which one do you go down? No pressure. Uh, going this way, right? Uh, poor, I, I think we should go this way. Uh, we don't really have time to think about this. Look, <laughs> well, we're uh, not talking about the same path. Oh, is it the same path? No, there is a path that Matthias noticed to the right, and there is a path that Pura noticed to the left. Look, this way. which one leads away from that shit? <laughs> fine. You know what? Let's go no path. It's fine. Let's just go. Let's get out let's, of here. Let's go. We go to the left. You go oh, my to. God, fine. <laughs> Oh, we go. We go to the right. <laughs> the left. The, damn it! Poor pick a pick a path. Directions depend on your uh, on your perspective. Yeah. Which side yeah. of the cairn are we on? We'll just tell poor to lead the way, and I'll grab a tail and let her drag me. <laughs> uh, Dude, my little my puppet. Tail. My puppy. Come on, <laughs> you know. The two of We're them go darting through a strange path cut into the underbrush. They have to go in on their hands and knees. Pip, Veth, you're one step behind. What do you do? Do you follow? 
Yes, I don't. Well, it, it would seem this is the group that's doing the investigation here. I would Unfortunately, be foolish to go off by ourselves. I think there is strength in numbers, so yes, I will go down that path. Give me athletics checks with advantage. As now the Ooh. arrows are kind of firing again and you have to leave the safety of the cairn to get to this small sort of green way. Only about as tall as two raccoons. I don't know um, what kind may, of unit of measurement that is, but that's what I'm calling may, it. May I misty step? You may. So um, Pip sort of shimmers in a, a strange way that it isn't quite human. It's not your traditional looking human. Um, and all of a sudden poofs out of existence and reappears over close to the path. I rolled a eight minus one, uh, so seven. I see that this is about to go badly, and I have tapped into the world's magic. I would like to use my... You know, i got to find the feature. In a second. Uh, my chronal shift. Ah. So as a reaction, uh, I would like to... F uh, hang on. Uh, I would like you to re-roll, please. <laughs> The world You're begins to slow. You're going to use your second uh, thing. The arrows so, yeah. kind of look like they're almost suspended in air around you for just a moment, Veth. 19. Double check what you're doing there. And you are able uh, to dive underneath an arrow just as it is slowed magically by Pip and make your way to the small green way. I sincerely appreciate your assistance. I have no idea what you could possibly be referring to. Think of it, nothing. Other and then than. wink. Huge anime eye wink. Glitter because there that fey magic has has started mm -hmm. glittering all around me. As you all crawl on your hands and knees, Matthias is the tallest gnome, so they have to do this as well through this like kind of small, almost like throwaway created by some strange creatures. Um, maybe wolves, the ground gets slicker underneath your hands. It gets mulchier, it gets stranger, clingier, and all of a sudden you burst out of the foliage and find yourselves in a rim of stone. You're at the top of what looks to be a strange hillock that you've come up the side on. And almost like a receding hairline, the forest kind of falls away from it on one side. It looks like, as you're looking around, maybe this isn't a clearing at all, but maybe the top of a building that's been grown over, or maybe a building that's been turned upside down. The earth here has kind of swallowed everything in this strange, undulating, crooked fashion, and you are left on the remains of this wretched place. Inset in a strange stone oculus in front of you is a strange amber disc, and just beneath its surface, you see a sword. Ooh, I think this is the uh, the weapon that was described. <laughs> I pulled yeah. up the hero fancy card. <laughs> I think this is me, and I do a pose. Should should we should we just let you know what I want to see how this goes? Same. Mm. I walk up and I'm like, <laughs> don't worry about me, I got this. And before I touch it, I would like to uh, investigate for traps. <laughs> yeah, give me an investigation check. I'm also going to cast Guidance on Matthias. Oh, that's not fair, you're helping. <laughs> I'm only helping so that we don't get blown up as well. Uh, <laughs> is that a D4, madame? It is. Uh, oh no, do I not have a single D4 in this damn chest? There's one. Okay. Uh, that usually means there's one on the floor, so you better wash your feet. All right. So I want to turn back as uh, Beth Cast Guidance, and I want to give her a little right there. Is it and... too late to revoke <laughs> Guidance? <laughs> uh, too late. 15 plus 8 plus 4, 26. Whew. So that's math, baby. You don't see any traps, but as you're looking at this blade, you don't believe this is the sun blade or the <laughs> blade that was described, the moon blade. 
It looks mm. different. It doesn't bear markings resembling a moon blade at all. Interesting. Um. What is? What's interesting? Is there a way uh, that I can maybe do an arcana check or something to maybe do a little bit more in-depth research, if you will? Yes. Roll arcana. Um, May I begin to cast detect magic? That will be a synthetic 20. A <laughs> synthetic. Never mind. Synthetic, because I didn't build it. It, it didn't come God natural. <laughs> I love you, Athena. With your synthetic 20, you realize that this blade is... This blade, you've seen it before. Maybe in a dream. Maybe somewhere in Gertruda's, <laughs> like... A strange, what do I call it, antechamber where you experience that tarot reading that almost seems like it happened 10 years ago now. Mm. Mm. You know, I've seen this blade before, and it's not a sun blade, it's not a moon blade, but it is familiar to Two me. words float in your head years end. <laughs> Years end. As you say this, you see a. Slight... Where does the apostrophe seem to fall in that for you? Is it, it? Is it a possessive years end? Is it a plural years is end? Is it a no apostrophe see, years you end? Is with a all of these that? questions. Uh, but the, it just, it just is in my mind years in, but like all the questions, I'm, t I'm telling you what I know. I just, do you, look at me. By the I'm time the you finish talking, the year will life. end. Is that what you're well, saying? I... <laughs> oh, if that means you're a year more beautiful, baby. Look a little me. piece of skin falls off her face. <laughs> I'm still dead. Uh, darling, you might want to consider moisturizing a bit more. Um... <laughs> Just Do, uh, maybe you would end has something to do with or summer. Wait, sorry, you got so cut wait. off there for a moment, Alex. Oh, I was saying maybe the year's end has something to do with the winter. As you say this, as you say the winter, you notice someone out of the corner of your eye. Her hair falls around her face gray like steel it's braided intricately in two french braids that kind of rest on her on her breastplate she has large antlers coming out of her head that look to be rimmed with frost her skin is pale and her eyes smolder with the warmth of a desert no she looks Maybe. at you curiously and says well what do you intend to do with that looking at the blade. <clears throat> the other one was named Midsummer, right? Yeah, yes. That's why I said this maybe one is... winter. Are you married to Strad? Well, I suppose, yes. Do you like it? <laughs> hmm. I suppose not. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I. What is your name? Well, you've already figured that out, Winter. Yes. Unlike some of the other wives, I was not willing to be embraced into a life of vampirism. Mm-hmm. How so? I think it's self-explanatory. Don't ask her to open up her trauma for you and your amusement. Well, I'm generally asking. She's come here. We're not dead yet, so obviously she has maybe barter or something to say. Or maybe she thinks that we could help her. 
Well, you yeah. should maybe start seeing the best out of people, Beth. That, that but is boy. not. But uh, uh, um, mm, mm, you are too pretty to be thinking that mean of people. Both of you. I'm sorry, you asked us a question. What are we going to do with the sword? Does it belong to you? Roll a persuasion check. Hmm. I'm terrible at this. Can I give the help action? Yes, how do you help? Well, I'm currently trying to make sure that Matthias isn't <laughs> drawing this woman to further want to peel my face off even more. So that, does that help? Does that work? Yes, Bronze. it does. Okay, cool. yes. I, I had to think about it. I had to think, and I was like, you know what? Preventing another player from messing things up is definitely a help, actually. That's helping. <laughs> Look, I'm j I'm not messing anything up. I'm asking questions. Pip asks questions all the time. We don't get on Pip about the questions. I'll, you know what? I'll just sit back. I'll let y'all handle it. That would be a 12. <laughs> you start to see like vague recognition flit into her eyes. I, uh, now that you mention it, I guess it does seem familiar a little bit, but uh, maybe I've just seen it before. Maybe it wasn't mine. Well, it, your name is Midwinter. The blade has something to do with the year's end. It seem you're connected in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose maybe you are correct. It's been a long time since I've thought about my old life. Mm. Then do we have permission from you to draw the sword out? You seek my permission? Well, if it does belong to you, then I'm asking your permission. Very well. You... You have it. Wonderful. And I'll walk over and try and draw the sword. You do. Effortlessly. Your hand dips through this strange amber, almost like honey, and you pull out this long, impossibly cold blade. It thrums in your hand, and immediately, Pip, you recognize this as a magical relic. Wonderful. Want to handle with that, that with care there. It's yes, I know. Ah, uh, well, I appreciate you allowing us to draw the sword. That's so. Winter, something you said intrigued me. You said you were an unwilling convert. Are you happy with your lot now? Well, it's been a difficult life. I do not feed on the flesh of living creatures like my sisters do. I make do with their scraps. Uh, Is there uh, something we can do for you? Uh, or do you have a... Uh, well, with. I almost wonder if there's something I can do for you. You remind me of a life I used to have. I was the last of my circle of druids. It is for this reason and this reason alone that Strahd cursed me with this affliction. I had no desire to join his wretched ranks. I think I have been in this days for so long I had forgotten who I was. Uh, if, if you could help us, we're trying to get to, uh, where the sun hits the shrine of, over there, uh, and your sisters, uh, sister wives, uh, don't really know how to, what to call them, uh, they keep shooting at us, um, maybe you could by chance ask them, uh, to stop? As 
I am the youngest. I do not think that they would ever listen to me. Or... Unfortunately. Uh, do you have any advice on... Dealing with them, talking with them, avoiding them. I don't want to I say killing them. I think for but you, I can. Oh, there's a little. <laughs> I think so. Do you wish to pass on? I do not think I am ready to pass on, but I think I can pass you something that will ease your journey, help you. In this cursed land to find your way. Mm. You seek the sun. May of I? We do. Yes. yes. You. And you will give me my blade? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As you hand it to her, you see the hilt kind of now looking like an like a like a metal splinter kind of start to strangely embed within her forearm and go into her blade, into, like go into her body, go into her arm. That's nasty. She I'm takes- suddenly aroused. She takes her hand kind of shakingly, reaches up to her antler and with a crack that sounds like thunder, <clears throat> breaks one of the prongs, wincing as she does so. She holds it aloft for a moment and then bringing her hands together, pulls it almost like with great effort and agony into a blade. She gives it to you, Pura, and plants a kiss upon your cheek. Oh. Here, Thank you. Take this. Uh, just right there. Take my fury. Take my vengeance, take my rage, and may it arm you in battle. Hmm. Thank you. I appreciate it. You've been very helpful. Uh, go that <clears throat> way. She points to, like, a strange path in the woods that has almost, like, appeared magically. Hmm. That will lead you to the sunlit shrine. But go quickly and carefully. For... They are approaching. Oh. Do you not see their shadows in the boughs of the trees? Do you not hear the strange creaking? They are uh. moving with great, with great swiftness. Uh. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe a kiss good luck on my cheek would... Uh, uh his tail just... smacks Matthias on the side of the face. Uh, uh you're right. Uh... Not the time or the place. Maybe we'll talk later. Uh, let's go on to the shine of sun. Um, Madame in winter. <clears throat> yes. I hold out a bean to her. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is strange. It will do things if planted in the ground. Maybe you'll find it to aid whatever pain you find in your life. Maybe I will plant it here. To remember what it was, it was something that brought life instead of death. So I hope soul. you can find peace. Uh, and if not, I hope you can find vengeance. Uh, well, hopefully. You are can you find all right it there, Matthias? Me. You look uh, it's, it's deeply not, uncomfortable, a bit uh, constipated. <laughs> It's it's fat it's um <clears throat> uh just it's it's just so touching how you uh beautiful women here like to interact with each other and care for each other's feelings. I just oh. I just was admiring um Matthias, the conversation. <clears throat> would you like a kiss upon your cheek? Well, I I mean if you're offering, I definitely would not decline that That's a no for me, dog. <laughs> it just, must be uh, so nice to want. And she walks forward. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh I see. Goodbye, Midwinter. She played hard to get, y'all. <laughs> she... Goodbye, Midwinter. I hope you do not come to harm from your sisters. As you say this, you do hear a <laughs> through the woods around Shh. you. 
and you see them darting rapidly from tree to tree. Their antlers kind of almost like tuning in to where you are with a strange supernatural power. Oh, but, um, mm -hmm. no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Can I cast Pass Without Trace? Yes, you definitely can. Would love awesome. to. So everyone can add a plus 10 to their stealth roll. I have a feeling we're going to be doing one soon. I just yep. don't know. Just, uh, just guess. But you are able to hide your entire party, Veth, for you too are a druid. And these creatures, although perfect opposites of what you are in some ways, you know their tricks. You can only hope that they don't know yours. You are able to secure a safe passage through the boughs of the wood, through the secret path that winter has laid out before you. And you find yourself, sure enough, looking upon the sunlit shrine. And that'll be where we call today's session Ooh. to an no! end. No! <laughs> but mommy, I want to go more. <laughs> um, <laughs> if the you, voice of everyone's nightmares. I will give nightmares. you the stat sheet for year's end. Um, it oh, is a cool. great sword, however, so I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I can't use it. <laughs> You'll be able to use it, but we'll workshop it's something. We can modify the it. stat block to make it something that you can use. No, it's fine. I, if somebody else can use it, then. Um, we have a two rogues, I was gonna say, I an artificer, in this and a druid. Yeah, but we'll... the, uh... if I had actually played the yeah. hexblade, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll modify it. Right. Can we'll the modify druid it. use it? It'll be fun. I mean, you know, good old I can't, guys can, can I... make anything out of something. I can't you know? use it. I don't think. No, this is awesome. I'm Wait, just... unless it's a druid weapon. <laughs> is it like a druid specific we'll, weapon? We'll chat. I'll message oh, you. Um, we're running a little close on time, and I want to respect everyone's time here. Thank you so much for joining the, us in this, our premiere of One Night Strahd. Uh, this important. is the first of a six part series. Um, yeah, I am really new to Strahd and I'm also new to pre-written modules. Hopefully I didn't bungle things up too badly. Thank you it's to Hedger blast. Group awesome. for sponsoring. As heck. Thank you, thank you for sponsoring this wonderful series. Um, you can catch us Friday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We've got a wonderful command in the chat. Make sure you go follow all of these wonderful people on all their socials. Thank you so much. Alex Ward, Jen Kretschmer, Persephone Valentine, Athena Palmer for joining me. All great people. Make sure you go show them love on their Twitches and Twitters and all of the links that we've posted. They deserve every bit of your attention and uh until next time we'll see you in barovia goodbye now <laughs> Ta -ta!